Welcome back to my YouTube channel and in this video I'm going to be going over 9 beginner mistakes that you should avoid at all cost. And so before we actually get started, make sure that you subscribe to this channel so you don't miss new lessons and content like this and like this video if you liked it. And to start this video off, I'm going to go over a mistake that a lot of beginners make which is going to be placing block elements inside of inline elements and you'll see why it's a problem soon. So I'm going to actually make an anchor tag here and then another h1. I'm going to write anchor tag, copy this, place it here and then heading tag. So there we go. Let's go to our or my CSS file. I'm going to select the anchor tag and then the h1 and set the background color here just to show you something. So I'm going to select blue and then I'm going to make it basically transparent. Let's go somewhere here. So there we go. So we can see that our H1 is a block element. So it takes as much space as it can. And then the anchor tag is the complete opposite. So it takes as much space as it needs. Now we can see that here, even though our H1, which is the block element, is inside of the inline element, it's still going to take as much space as it can. So basically, when you do things like these, putting block elements inside of inline elements, it basically hinders the property of each of these elements. And it also confuses our computer here, and it's really not that good. So to fix this, what you would want to do is do the complete opposite. So you would write h1, and then inside of it, you would create the anchor tag. I'm going to copy the link here, place it here, and then I'm going to copy the text from here and also place it here. And now we're going to see something change. So we can see that this right here is going to be the H1, so it takes as much space as it needs. And then we have the anchor tag here, which is why this part is darker. So basically, there are two um, background colors here. So we have the H1. Let me actually inspect it so you can see it better. So the anchor tag, we can see that the background is going to be here for the anchor tag and also for the H1. But then over here is going to be just for the H1, which is why this right here is darker. Moving on to the next mistake, which is going to be using the break tags or overusing them. And the reason that it's a mistake is because it makes your code look very unprofessional. It makes you look like a beginner and that you don't know how to use tags at all. So instead of doing this, or even worse, without even a, an element, so basically just plain text, and we can see that nothing really changed, right? So instead of doing this, what you could do is basically just create three different paragraphs or any other text elements like this, and then just paste a code in here if you wanted that break. And we can see that it works the same way, but there is some space here. So what you could do is select the paragraphs and then you could remove the margin. So there we go. It works the same way. And the only reason that I would use breaks. So let's say that I used breaks. The only, the only times you would see me do that is when I would probably teach you something and it wouldn't really matter. So, or even when I learned stuff. So let's say there was a form and I didn't want to use any CSS. I just wanted to teach you guys about something. Then I would do something like input and then let's do input submit, right? So this doesn't actually, there we go. So we can see that it doesn't look that good. I'm just gonna write submit here. So there we go. Let's say that I wanted this to be at the bottom. Instead of using CSS, I would just go here and add a break. And now moving on to the last HTML mistake, which is gonna be using inline styles in your um, elements. So in this case, we have an H1 and then we write style here. And then we can see that we have the same styles in this one. And then also for the paragraph, we have some styles. And so the reason that it's a mistake is because, first of all, you have a CSS class where you could write all of your code. Actually, let me just delete this. Um, and so you can also write, you can write uh, styles in your header or let's say somewhere in the body. Uh, it makes your code really unorganized, unprofessional. And when you have a lot of code, so let's say something like this, right? It would be really hard to find the right style that you want. So let's say that I wanted to change the style of this one, right? You wouldn't really be able to find it. Going on to the first CSS mistake, which is going to be repeating the same code. So over here we can see, let's go to the HTML file. We have an H1, we have an H2 here, and we have a paragraph and a span. 
and we can see that the H1 and the H2 have the exact same styles and we have the paragraph and then the span and they also have the same styles and over here we can see that this is basically what my code looks like and it looks really doesn't look messy but there's way too much code for all of this right so to shorten this instead of doing this what you can do is let's say delete this one and then we could add it to the h1 so to do that okay if we actually save this right now then we can see that these styles don't work anymore right but then if we go to the h1 and we want the exact same styles as our h1 then what we will do is go after the h1 add a comma and then write h2 and now we can see that it works and if we wanted them to have the same uh, font size then we can set it here so font size set this to uh let's do five rems that's too big too so there we go both of them are two rem and we can see that they're the same font size now moving on to these two this is going to work the same way so i can remove this one if i save it we can see that these styles for this they're gone but we can add them here because we want the styles for our span to be the exact same styles that our paragraph has so we go after the paragraph and then we add span here and so there we go we can see that they're the same and even their font size is probably the same so i'll leave it like that moving on to the next beginner mistake with css which is going to be not using fallback fonts now what they do is basically if let's say a user is on your website and you have this font loaded which is going to be system ui and their browser didn't support that font then what it would do is you would have more fonts after this one and it would try all of these other fonts until it would use um, a default font so something like sans serif it's on the default font but it's one of them and so let me show what this actually looks like so let's go to our span write font family and then i'm going to write arial and so we can see that the default here is going to be arial and then all of these other ones so i'm going to use this and explain it again so if the user's browser does support Arial, then what it would do is move on to this one. And these are not all, the, all of these fonts are not the same, but they're pretty close to each other. So this font is going to be pretty close to Arial. It's not going to be the same, but it's the closest to Arial. Now after this one, if the user's browser does support this font, then it would go to Sans Serif, which is one of the default fonts. And so Sans Serif is going to be pretty close to this one. So let's try to do it for our H1 and H2. So it was system UI, there we go. So we can see all of these fonts and sans serif is gonna be at the very end again because it's one of the default fonts and it's the closest default font to system UI. Moving on to the last CSS beginner mistake which is gonna be overusing important. And if we go to my HTML file, I'm gonna explain what's happening here. So we have this H1 with a class of red and when something has a class of red, an element with a class of red, the color is going to be set to red. And we have this paragraph. So this paragraph also has a class of red, but none of them are actually red. And the reason for that is the important here. And a lot of beginners, when they learn that you can use important, they tend to overuse it and cause problems like these. And this isn't really a problem in this case because there's no code, but when you're building your, let's say your own website or your own project and you start overusing important, then it will cause you a lot of problems that you don't want, right? So the most basic way to fix this is obviously removing it and adding some more classes or IDs to select special elements. But if there is a case that you need to use it so let's say that you have bootstrap and you can't really override it by any other way then that's when you can use the important here now moving on to the first javascript beginner mistake which is going to be writing your if statements like this or i guess actually in this case mostly so we're checking here if this value exists so we have an array here with five different values and we're trying to see if the fifth value here exists so if it doesn't equal to null then i'm going to console log that value else i'm going to console log this and we can see that it does exist so we're going to console log five which is the value right now the reason it's a mistake is because you can actually write it like this and it's a lot cleaner and nicer so we can see that i'm going to get the exact same value here now if i change this to five so this five 
we can see that we're going to console out this. And now if I delete this, then the exact same thing is going to happen. So basically here, we're saying if this, then this. So it's kind of like saying if this exists, then I'm going to console out this. But then if it doesn't exist, then we're going to do this. Moving on to the second mistake, which is going to be not using default values. So we can see that here I have a function which is called create introduction. And here I'm supposed to write the name and age of some someone. And it's basically going to console log, hello, my name is plus the name and I am plus the age years old. And here I'm not writing anything. Now, what I mean by not using default values is instead of this happening so we're gonna console or we're getting console logged my name is undefined and i'm undefined years old so instead of this happening we can set here default values right so to do that we would write if and then note name then we would do something so we would basically set the name here to uh let's just do bob right so what's happening here is if we're getting no name from here or I guess from here, when we're calling the function, then we're gonna set the name here to Bob. And we can see that once I save this and this gets reloaded, then we can see that now the default name is, is Bob here. And if I actually set this to something else, so let's do Josh, then now we can see that it's gonna be set to Josh. But then if it's not gonna be set to anything, then it's gonna go back to the default, which is Bob. Now we can use this the same way with our age, so if, we're not getting age then we're going to set the age to let's do plus 18 so we know that they have to be plus 18 so hello my name is bob and i'm plus 18 so over 18 but then now if we will now we have no age so it's going to be 18 plus but then we can still set his age to something so let's do 21 and so now we can see that it's going to be set to 21. And now moving on to the last beginner mistake, which is going to be confusing addition and concatenation. So basically what this means is confusing variables, right? So we can see that here I have a function called calculate. We're getting num1 and num2. And so we're basically going to console log num1 plus num2. So it's basically addition. And here I'm writing 23 and 5, but because they're strings, we're not going to be actually adding them like numbers. So they're strings, right? So when we have two strings, so let's say let A is going to be set to um, hello. And then we have let B, which is going to be set to world. Now, if we console log A plus B, then we're going to get hello world because they're strings. But then if they were numbers, so 5, 10, then we would get 5 and then 10. And to fix this, we have to remove the quotations to set them to integers. So it's going to be 5 and then 10 here. And now we're going to see that it's going to be 15 instead of 5 and 10. So we have the same deal here. So 23 and then 5. And now we're going to see that also the color changes here to purple. So now it's going to be 28 instead of 20 and then 5. So 235. And so this is going to be for this video. So I really hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you did, then leave a like. Sub to the channel for more content like this. Leave a comment down below if you have any video requests. And hopefully, see you next video.